this is Pastor Kelly Creek from Our Savior Lutheran Church and School. Today is April 1st, the Wednesday after the fifth Sunday in Lent, and we begin our daily devotions as always. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm for this morning comes from the 18th Psalm, which is a timely psalm that helps to remind us that God is with us and that God hears our prayers. And he reacts to those prayers. And so let us hear from God's word, the 18th Psalm. To my distress I called upon the Lord, to my God I cried for help. From his temple he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. Then the earth reeled and rocked, the foundations also of the mountains trembled and quaked, because he was angry. He sent from on high, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He rescued from my strong enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. The Lord dwelt with me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he rewarded me. And so we hear from this psalm that when we reach out to God, he hears our prayers and he answers our prayers. And the, like it says, they, that our enemy was here and confronted me in the day of our calamity. Well, we're in a in the midst of a calamity now. And so we reach out to God knowing that he hears us. And we also understand that the answers to our prayers to the to the faithful are always answered. Now it may be yes, it may be no, it may be not now. But we trust in God and to hear our prayers and to to answer them in his will and his time. Our New Testament reading for this morning comes from the 15th chapter of Mark. And this is where Jesus is delivered over to Pilate. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priest held consolation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. And so we learn from today's gospel reading that Jesus endured this criticism, um, this trial, and he endured it, endured it silently. He went willingly to the cross for you and for me. Because the world doesn't understand God's kingdom of grace and mercy. And the world doesn't understand its king. Jesus. And if it was left to the world, uh, we would have no salvation. And so therefore, Christ went willingly, silently, on our behalf, on your behalf. And so take comfort in that, that uh, God loved us so much. God loved uh, his creation of man, that he would send his only son to die for us so that we could be reconciled back to him. For this Wednesday, the 1st of April, we will uh, begin looking again at our uh, Learn by Heart for the week. And so this week we will look at the fourth part of baptism um, from our small catechism. This is the Sacrament of Holy Baptism, the fourth part. What does such baptizing with water indicate? It indicates that the old Adam in us should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all sins and evil desires, and that a new man should daily emerge and arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. Where is this written? St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 6, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. And our Learn by Heart scripture verse for this uh, Wednesday comes from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, the fifth chapter in the 17th verse. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. 
And this week's catechetical hymn comes from Martin Luther's To Jordan Came the Christ Our Lord. It is the three verses or three stanzas that you've already memorized. So um, I wanted to read from you a little bit about what it is that this hymn represents and the meaning behind each of these stanzas. And we will look at all seven stanzas briefly. It says, Stanza 1 begins by setting the stage. Christ at the Jordan, followed, following his Father's will, being baptized by John. The second half states that, according to Christ's institution, baptism is a washing that cleanses us from sin, according to Titus 3.5, or at least from death through Christ's death, as Romans 6, 3 through 4 states, and a new life, as St. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Stanza 2 echoes the Catechism's answer to the question, what is baptism? By affirming that our Lord here, with his word and dows pure water, freely flowing, it then record, recounts John's words from Luke 3.16. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Stanza three, the story, in stanza 3, the story unfolds with the Father's public af affirmation of his Son in the voice of the clap from the cloud. Stanza 4 continues with the event that happened immediately afterwards, namely the Holy Spirit descending on Jesus like a dove, coupled with more assurances of God's promise to comfort and sustain his children. Stanza 5 begins with the instruction given to the disciples in Matthew 28, 19, and 20. To go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. Answering the Catechism's question, which is that word of God? The last half of stanza 5 and all of stanza 6 not only answer the third question, what benefits does baptism give, but also spells out the sad consequences to those who cast aside the, this grace so freely given. Finally, stanza 7 testifies that although the sacrament appears to be only ordinary water, Christians know by faith that it is a washing that actually saves because it is combined with the word of God. It reveals to the faithful God's love as seen in the suffering and death of Christ. And so this hymn from Martin Luther helps us to remember who we are in our baptisms, helps us to remember um, what God has done for us, the promises attached to that water in the word, and that we rest secured in that, that knowledge that we have been marked by God, and that he has claimed us as his children and, and holds us always in his hands. And we can uh, rest secured that he listens and hears his children as they cry to him, as our psalm stated this morning. And then we know that, that Christ has done it all for us, willingly going to the cross so that we would be able to have a life with him in heaven. We can now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we can now pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We can now pray the prayers of the day. Lord Jesus Christ, you released many from their bondage to sin, death, and the devil, as the healer of the nations. But when it came time to release you, the crowd chose a murderer instead. Through our co-crucifixion with you in the waters of our baptism, may we continually be released from our sins as we confess you to be our everlasting King. For you live and you reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now I hope today will be productive for you. And I hope you continue to, um, to be diligent with your studies, not neglecting anything, making sure that uh, today that you are um, memorizing your, your learn by heart, and that you are uh, committing that to memory, to not just for a grade, but, but for the benefit of knowing God's Word and being grounded in it. And so, until we meet again tomorrow, it's Pastor Kelly Craig saying, God bless.